So excited to talk again to stand-up comedian, actor, author, writer, producer. Craig, if you have any more titles, I'm going to have to like go through the whole show. Craig Shoemaker, <laughs> thanks for coming back again. How you doing, man? Yeah, my dad is my biggest one, though, My being a father. I That's hear, the, I hear well, you on that. Especially considering my dad left when I was born. I was like, something I said, wah, he's gone. <laughs> so there, that, that was your first comedy outfit there. You, you have plenty to talk about right there, right? I, I started in comedy the day I was born. It was like, I was meant to do this. But uh, uh, and being a dad is no easy task. You know, I walk in, you know, I, I walk up to applause. You know, I'm playing Sellersville. I'm going to get big applause. I walk in my house. I have four kids. They turn their chairs like the judges on The Voice. It's like, yeah, yeah, good to see you. <laughs> They're not impressed either. <laughs> no, no, they are. They are not impressed, except when I introduce them to people, which I've done my whole life. Is you know they get to hang with all these big cheeses. Yeah, so how old are your kids? I got twenty three, seventeen, and then I got so twelve. And seven, I sound like George Foreman, uh, but none of them are named Craig. <laughs> I was, are they all named or, Craig, even the girls? <laughs> no, I have a little girl named Chloe. She's seven. She's a riot too, but I have three boys and, uh, and my son is into the sports business already. I See, I, I long ago gave up, my son's in college now, and I long ago gave up on the idea that I was cool. I could introduce him, Jason's seen, he, he, the kid's been in, in the dugout with players yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, and yeah. he's a huge sports fan and not nothing impressed. makes him cool. <laughs> But, but I would think for you, so you have kids that are in the demographic of streaming all these shows that we watched a few years ago, like The Office. And so can't you at least say to your kid, like, hey, I was on Parks and Rec. Like, that doesn't even work? <laughs> no, that would, does not do it, especially when I was wearing the, my, I, I wore a tri-cornered hat and, and knickers for that episode, those episodes. Oh, you embarrassed them. No, exactly. I, yeah. I went to the Les Mis premiere thinking that everybody would wear the outfits. So I was the only one. I thought it would be like, you know, hey, there's a Chewbacca and an R2-D2 and a R2-D2 at a Star Wars. Why can't I go to Les Mis dressed as Javert? And it did not work. I embarrassed them all the time. Even though I have connected, like my oldest son worked for the Lakers. My ex-girlfriend owns the Lakers. And like, you know, we're front row with the, the owner. My whole family is. She's Aunt Jeannie to my kids. Even that, I still, I have such bad status in my house. They've done everything you can possibly imagine. I had literally nothing. The best I did when I grew up, I, I went to the vet. And you know how you wear, wear your glove? You know, wear your glove yeah. to catch a foul ball? I was, yeah. my, my head was scraped by the Goodyear blimp. That's how high up I was. <laughs> I was under the snow coast sign. But you had your glove. Feet. I had my glove on. I would always put it away when Larry Boa came up to bat because I knew he couldn't reach me. Because he, he always choked up so much. I, I put the thing down and go, I'm not going to catch anything from this guy, Papa Boa. So. All right. So, so Craig, you're going to be this Friday, you're going to be at the Sellersville Theater returning to, to do live comedy. Yes. Before we ask about live comedy and what it's like to return to that. I have I have a question that I've been curious about. So it's called an evening with Craig Shoemaker, the Love Master. But before I ask about the Love Master, we kind of think that you misnamed the show. Yep, we got a suggestion. Because if I, if I read correctly, Tony Luke is going to open for you. He's not. Oh, uh -huh, see oh, that? He's not. No. It says it on the Sellers the Sellersville Theater uh, uh, site. Oh, jeez, oh, I better call Tony. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because we wanted it to be Cheesesteaks and Craig if that was the case. So no, go oh. back to the title you got. You're all good. <laughs> do you do you know that I mentored him? You know, he's he lost his son to a, a drug overdose and he went into a horrible funk. And about a year after I said he's a very close friend. I said, Tony, listen, you're gonna be a comedian. He goes, I don't know nothing about comedy. I said, yes, I'm gonna train you to be a comedian. The night before he was about to debut, I taught him, you know, jokes and we wrote some jokes. He was going to Helium and he went up on stage at Frank and Luigi's. There's only two other people in there and six of us howling, laughing. He's there rehearsing with a, a rolled up fork and knife with a napkin as his microphone. And he, we were laughing. So we had tears coming down, not because he was funny, because how bad he was going to bomb. <laughs> <laughs> you know, typical Philly guys where he thinks he's killing. We're going, oh my God. Oh well, my God. He was killing oh it. God. He was He's killing it. That's for so sure. <laughs> all right, all right. I gotta, so, so, I gotta admit, it was the greatest debut in comedy history, and he's been doing really well ever since. And we have a TV show together called Comedy Kitchen, where he teaches famous comedians how to do a 
dish for the judges. I teach famous chefs how to do comedy for the judges. Oh, so who, who does a better job? Well, who do you think? I'm trying to teach <laughs> chefs how to be a comic in a, in, a, in a week, and he gets to show a recipe that you can't taste on television? Who do you think has it tougher? You don't know if these things are good. You go, mm, that's really good. Yeah, but although they have judges and all that, but uh, I won't tell you who wins, but it is a very difficult thing for me to be victorious in that department. But it's a fun show, and uh, Tony opens for me a lot. And, you know, ever since, and he, I have an organization called Laughter Heals, and um, Tony really believes in the healing powers of laughter as I do. You know, it really helped him get to a better spot in his life about losing his son. Well, you know, and that we talk to athletes all the time on the show about how they use their platform. And, and you're one of those people. I mean, you're not you're not an athlete or you might be. We don't know. But um, you use your platform more than a lot of people that I've seen, especially in comedy, to help those people in your community. How did you get involved in? laughter heals and, and other things that you've been working on in the community actually it's kind of sports related one of my best friends michael goldberg he's from northeast philly but live, living in la and we raised our kids to all be eagles sixers flyers phillies fans in la which i'm sure i'm gonna get a knock on the door from child services on that <laughs> one <laughs> like, sorry kids another year <laughs> i don't know where ben simmons is sorry he's apparently uh, gonna report now so you can keep following along with that That'll be yeah. Fun. Can you can you take them out on your plane when you come back? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, because he's not getting paid right now. So I he, don't he, know. He needs somebody to help him get back here. <laughs> it's a whole other topic. But my kids have suffered through some really bad Sixers teams. We go to the games, and you know, I mean, but anyway, when when, when they're in LA and even in Philly, but and all the teams and. Golds was another guy, you know, he wrote Cool Runnings, Little Giants, you know, he's a big sports guy. And uh, we're filming the Love Master movie. He actually directed my first movie, The Love Master with Farrah Fawcett. Da, da, da. And uh, his wife was ovulating. I said, you should do The Love Master. They wanted to have a baby. He did. And I guess Love Master loosened things up. Baby Kayla was born nine months later. <laughs> Look and, at you. You're, uh, you're, you're having I'm kids being born off your comedy. I'm Should telling they? you, if you come to my show in Sellersville, wear protection. All right. So, so <laughs> anyway, to you're, you're going to have to put a disclaimer at the beginning. I, of I have show. to do it. I'm telling you, at least five different people are giving me credit. One sent me a photo of the kid was conceived in the parking lot of the Bray Improv because Love Master, you know, laughter what it does it loosens you up you're not trying to have a child and it loosens you up you have fun so that's what laughter does and so i noticed it then but then a, a, a year and a half after kayla was born he got brain cancer and they gave him three months to live and that was my literally my haha moment where everything shifted in my life to more purpose-driven comedy like i I'm, i know that i'm doing this for a reason now and that's to spread the medicine of laughter the awareness of what it does Laughter really does oxygenate your body, healing endorphins, release stress. It's all been studied, but we don't talk about it. We're too busy because there's no laughter lobby. You don't see laughter commercials. You see commercials for drug companies with these temporary fixes. So we, uh, he came to all my laughitations. I do a guided laughitation. All my, I worked in a cancer facility developing this program. He showed up for all that took all the prescriptions of go see more comedy, da, da, da. He lived 15 years past that prognosis of three months he was supposed to die, you know, and uh, I, I, I made him laugh on his deathbed. And that made me a very happy person, not to say goodbye to him. But if you're going to go, we all got to go. Why not die laughing? I, I told him he I said I, was, I told him he was in a coma and I got him out of a coma. I said, what can I do? I said, let me give you a handy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, look, I got, I got all these serious questions that I could ask, or these non-serious questions I could ask you about content. But I want to ask you, what's it mean to you to be able to impact people's lives like that through laughter? Like, yes, it's great that you're using your platform, but you know, we often guests will talk about what it does for other people, but not what it means to them. What's it mean to you to be able to do that? I love helping people period always have even when i was a kid you know i grew up very you know like poor and it was very difficult i was kidnapped when i was a kid but it was actually i met the guy at an eagles game and uh you know it was really you know serial pedophile and i ran through i ran through some tough times i mean suicide attempts and and all that so now that i'm living life at a, at a, at a I'm winning at life right now. I love my life and I, why not share it? I don't want to keep everything. You know, I don't want to keep everything. I want to, you know, 
I employ other people. Actually, we're shooting more episodes of Wolfpack, and I, I created that with my friend from third grade in Philadelphia, and we're shooting in Philadelphia in a few weeks. Um, we're still, we're still waiting. We're still waiting so that we can mentor someone. You want to mentor somebody? Sure. Oh, that's another show. This is a business show. And as a matter of fact, a few minutes ago, you're the first to hear, Yeah, you know, we take businesses and help them through mentorship and investment in businesses in the Philadelphia area. I just signed literally before this, you're the first to hear this, is Dominic Brown's business. Where he's going to be featured on the Wolfpack this year. What is it, isn't he with Arsenal, the baseball? Yes, organization? exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They're going to, we're going to feature them. Uh, it's on Amazon Prime and Apple. So we'll, we'll be shooting the first week of the first two weeks of December. We've got these great businesses. We're going to feature Philadelphia Sound. We got a lot going on these, these episodes. We got four in right before COVID. And now we now we're starting up again. Yeah, we had you and Leslie on to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and Leslie's back. And uh, we have some other wolves as well. And uh, we're just, you know, to me, to me, this is life. You know, when you can give back, mentor, have fun give people opportunities, um, you know, a system. I fixed up nine marriages already. I, you know, and none of those include me, by the way, put me up with me. I'm in double digits. So <laughs> you don't follow your own uh, advice. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> as, as much as you're trying to help people with wealth back, have you run across anyone that you just like went like this and went, Oh, oh we can't help this person. Uh, <laughs> just, there's, there's no hope. <laughs> you have to watch the episodes. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's in there. There's, there's one where you'll see in one of the episodes where they're going, really? You don't have the the numbers? You know what I mean? Like, but that's what part of it is. It's like, you don't want everybody to succeed. You want to see what it takes to fail so that you can succeed and learn from it. So that's when you watch the show, you'll see, you'll know who I'm talking about. Well, let's go back to comedy for a second, because succeeding and failing to me is is something that you have to do if you're going to be a comedian i mean you're it takes a long time from what i've seen the methodology of like coming up with a joke and and oh. and, and making it hit that you have to fail sometimes how do you how do you get the courage to go out there try new material knowing that some of it's just not going to work well, it's really a matter of my wife always compliments me on one thing especially my background is the one thing that kept me going is resilience I just have this like, and it's a Philly thing, by the way. This is something that was ingrained in me. Philadelphia really is. I want to move back there from LA, to tell you the truth. I mean, I really do. I was looking at houses and stuff. It's convincing. It's convincing my kids who live in sunny California, my <laughs> wife, that want sunshine and circadian rhythms, whatever else she's talking about. She's very new age, my wife. You're, you're already not cool enough for them. Now you're going to bring them back to Philly from <laughs> California. <laughs> How's that yeah, going to go? Over just in case you? you're wondering, if you look out the window right now, there's it's overcast. No sun. There's no <laughs> sun right now. <laughs> Let's see. Well, I took them there, and I try to make it like, uh, like Pleasantville. You know, like I was just trying to show them, or not Pleasantville, but, uh, the Truman Show. Mm -hmm. I'd say, look, honey, a yoga studio. Look, another yoga <laughs> studio. I was like trying to plant things, and it was sunny. It was a beautiful week. The last day, it was cloudy. She goes, I can't live here. I need circadian rhythms oh. or whatever the hell she was talking about she's a she's very spiritual very new age she actually says to me do you know it's spiritual to fart i go oh well you married the dalai lama it sounds like you're getting a lot of comedy options between family and I, you know obviously we're a sports show so i, I want to ask you the convergence of comedy and sports and how much sports and fandom leads to potential material. I mean, if you look at this week alone between coaches having problems <laughs> where things come up, we're a 24 hour voyeurism society, which seems to be endless content for a comedian like you. Yeah, yeah it is. Well, I had my own sports show on Sirius for a while. And, you know, I just found that it needs more humor though. I'll tell you that. Did I tell you the story about the Boston Red Sox in 04 with speaking of sports? No. Oh. Well, the big, the big, you know, they were had that curse and they were trying to like take Babe Ruth's piano out of the lake and they're blaming everything, Bucky Dent, Bill Buckner and all that. But what's the consistent thing? It's not owners. It's not, they change, players change, management changes. The one thing is vibration of the crowd. That's what's, that's what's pervasive. And this happens by the way, for Philadelphia. So this is what's going to help Philadelphia. Johnny Damon was playing for them and um, it was an 04 and he come, came out here and they swept, you know, the angels, my buddy from Brockton, Massachusetts, Hey Johnny, go get them Yankees. And then sure enough, they played horrible first three games against the Yankees. I don't know if you remember, it was just awful. My buddy Chuck calls me, Shoemaker, 
get your lantern healing crap worth your boy Damon. He can't hit the broad side of a barn. So I said, you're right. And I called Johnny. I said, Johnny, listen, this has worked before. It worked for Phil Jackson the year before. I had helped them win a championship through laughter. I arranged for Kobe and Shaq to stop fighting and go to a comedy show. And they went and they won 17 the next 20. And they went on to the championship from last to first that year in 03. Yeah, so but, said, but, Johnny, but their wives get pregnant afterwards. That's it. I be, I'll bet that you, if you look it up, I'll bet you that did happen. I didn't even think about that. Thank you, thank you for that add on to the laughter heels. So I said, Johnny, play my special. I had a brand new special and he played it for the clubhouse. They never lost another game. He had seven RBI on the last game against the Yankees. They swept the Cardinals and they won their first championship in 86 years. He called me drunk on a golf course the next morning on my radio show. He said, there's a lot of great teams. We had the most fun. So that's what we got to do to reverse all the Philadelphia curses is bring more fun and laughter to the have, damn game. Have you, so can, can have you, you watched the Eagles game? Yeah, I was going to say, have you watched the games recently? I was telling Jeff, watching the Eagles game that they won this past weekend. I've had root canals that were less painful than what I saw there. <laughs> what is fun about that, Craig? <laughs> I will tell you, it is it is rough. I was at the game, the opening game. I'm going this Thursday as well, and it's just. And I'm also going to the Raiders, Eagles. I mean, I'm loyal, but it is hard to be loyal, as you know. When you, but they, they but again, the players change. What is it? The only thing that remains consistent is the city, and the city has to have a better sense of humor about all of it, and adds more. You know who's really good for the city, in my opinion, Joel Embiid. I think he's one of the perfect players. For in, in Philadelphia history, I would say he's one of the best because he gives a lightness to it. He's got a great attitude. And that that's really what it's going to take. And that and all the teams that do well, they always have these characters. Do you remember when the Eagles won the Super Bowl? They put the dog masks on. They had fun. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Lane Johnson and Jason Kelsey. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and Kelsey with his, his the best speech in Philly history. This in a mummer's costume. <laughs> Why is he beloved? Because he had the most fun. Now, see, we need more players like that on all the different teams. And that's going to, that's really going to help when you have these characters. Hey, look at, they didn't win the championship, but the 93 Phillies, they were a horrible team on paper, but they were the really whack jobs. (laughs) They had had a guy like, you know, psycho Mikey or whatever. (laughs) I would think that having, I would think that having fun leads to more chemistry on a team. Is that your approach? That's, that's my point is if you're going to hang with me, I teach, I teach courses. I have a a podcast about this and lightened up. You think about when you were growing up, who are your best friends? Always the ones you laughed with, right? That's chemistry. So if you have instant chemistry with people, but by adding more laughter, more levity, more joy, because we've all been through the anger, everybody's pissed off. And, you know, I saw a guy one time in Philly, I was at a game. Oh, is that actually at a game with golds? And he was all those years, you know, he had the cancer. He still had the brain cancer. And he stands up and he's having a, a seizure and he's standing up and a guy in back of him in Philly goes down in front. <laughs> and we go, and we try to whisper to the guy, he has cancer. He's having a seizure. And of course in Philly he goes, I don't care. I can't see through <laughs> him and his cancer. <laughs> oh my but goodness. We, but guess what? We laugh about it. And that guy kept living and living and living with his brain cancer because he always had laughter in his life. I am telling you, it, it leads to so many more better things, but it's just not talked about. You know what is talked about? Misery. Misery loves company, anger, rage, outrage. It, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is. The next one's, the next, it's just next up, they're going to hear it. You know, every single, think of a quarterback. Was there a beloved quarterback in Philadelphia? Maybe Nick Foles. The backup is always beloved until they're the starter. <laughs> That was a backup. And- Wait, what about Carson Wentz? He's beloved. Yeah, I had a T-shirt with a Wentz wagon on it that I had to get rid of. Oh yeah, there you go, Wentz wagon. How'd that work out for you? Those no, he, he, he's not very well, well now look, because people want him to do well with the Colts, so they get a higher draft pick. Craig, I gotta like get my kids all new shirts. I got a four and a half year old who's wearing a Sixers shirt that has Ben Simmons on the back. Like, what am I supposed to do here? Uh, it costs us a fortune. I said they need to make these things in dry erase. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have I have a Kevin Cobb jersey. What oh, am I do there's with? one. That was going to be a hand me down. He was like the future. Oh, no, one, that, they that... all have like one or two good games, and they're the future. Philadelphia 
makes a wagon happen. And oh god, you I, might I, be I, the I, only person with a Kevin Cobb jersey other than his parents. <laughs> I did want to ask you on a, on a little more serious note. I, I grew up with my dad listening to Overnights, and uh, I heard Big Daddy Graham a lot. Uh-huh. He was like the voice of yeah. of me growing up, and um, I know you had a relationship with him yeah. from a comedy side, a sports side. We lost him recently. Yeah. He had had a lot of challenges after that. He still used laughter to get yeah. through the challenges he was facing. You want to talk about your friend and him a little bit? Uh. I'm telling you, boy, you talk about somebody missed. That guy was one of the most unique people, one of my most unique friends, and I've been around the world, and that dude is unique. I mean, no one like him. I have more stories about him, a lot of making fun of him, too. And, I mean, I, I, with that accent, I went to his, um, they had like a celebration, and his daughter gets up, she says, all right, raise your hand if, if you do an impression of my dad's voice, the entire place with their hands up. <laughs> The nasally, like... Nasal, come on now. Yeah. What do you do? I remember we went to, uh, at the end of Philly accent, yeah, we went yeah. to, uh, we snuck into the second half on Broadway. We used to do second half on Broadway. We, we'd go up to New York. We'd go into these plays on the second half. You didn't have to pay. you just sneak in. We went and saw um, The Music Man, and it ended, and he goes, and he goes, what the hell? Where's 76 trombones? <laughs> I want my money back. I go, Eddie, we didn't pay. He's here. And then all of a sudden, bah, 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 and it turns out it was like a fake ending. And then they did this like 10 minute version of 76 trombones. He's up cheering and laughing. That's what I'm talking about. That's worth my money. <laughs> so he was a, a classic guy. And there was no, and really, really bright. He knew so many things about music and comedy, and theater, and film. I mean, I, I, you talk about somebody missed. That guy is, he's really going to be missed. It's a shame because he was on overnight that more people didn't know him. Uh, but uh, God, what a, what a what a wonderful guy. I just, I, I love I love him. You know, we had a thing called the Love Club for a while, which we had to shut it down because we're from Philly. We can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but what, what comes across when, when we talk to you and other people that are from Philadelphia is is that those roots don't go away no. even though even though you're a california guy right now no, uh, no. It, you exactly. still you still have these connections with all of these people that you know from back from philadelphia yeah and, and you're coming back here once again to 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 a live audience to sit there and and, and talk comedy yeah and and, and 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 produce more television from there my partners were the eagles the last time i mean there were you know, a bunch of them are fans of mine and we became friends and partners. And I just stayed, I, you know, I created the show within five weeks. I was shooting in Philadelphia, calling people I went to kindergarten with as my accountant. I mean, this, these are roots that will never, and by the way, I'm not the only one like that out here in, in LA, you know, Kevin Hart's that way. My buddy, you know, I actually text on game day with uh, David Boreanaz, you know him. Mm-hmm. Well, and Angel. You know, He's do he's killing it. We all grew up watching his dad. His dad was the first one to put me on television on AM Philadelphia, Dave Roberts. So I always thank him for that. And I got to see Dave over at, uh, over at his son's house, which is near me. And uh, Ryan Philippe, you know, he's another one I, I text with. He's a huge Eagle Sixers Flyers Phillies fan. Both of them are. And, you know, right, well, so well, 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 you guys, the, the thing that drives me nuts um, is the Eagles chant at every other event? So, do, do when you're in an Eagles game, like or a, some sporting event with Philadelphia in another town, is there still does the Eagles chant show up? Oh, huge! Are Everywhere. you kidding me? I actually went to a Chargers game out here. Craig's leading it, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's it is. I went and got a hot dog, and I hear this gigantic cheer. I'm like, oh, damn, the Chargers scored. No, the Eagles scored. <laughs> I hear, where I thought it was a Chargers touchdown. It was 80% were Eagles fans. I mean, we travel really well. I'll be I'll be in Vegas in a, in a couple of weeks for the Raider game. I'm not sure about that one. I don't know if I want to go and green with the Raider fans. Or sometimes you got to tamp it down a little bit wear the, black, jer- wear the black jersey they yeah wear. i'm gonna have to wear, mm-hmm. but not with the bird on there they'll, they'll, right. they're they're almost as bad as philly fans i'm not it's like a tie i'm not <laughs> so sure who's who's worse well, so well. how excited so how excited are you to, to get back in a theater and, and to to have the response that you can't get any other place 
Oh, I love it because I see people and they inspire me to do bits on stage. I'm a storyteller, which is a lost art, unfortunately. And I, I'll see someone like, oh, there's Mike Pitko. And I say, I remember in 11th grade when you had mono and I replaced you in a class because you had all the hot girls. It was my it was my lunchtime and I brought my lunch in there. And, and I was so bad to the teacher. It was a substitute. So she didn't know it wasn't Mike Pitko. So he came back from having mono and was suspended because of me. Because I said I was Mike Pitko. <laughs> we could talk stories with you all day, but we know you are a busy man. We encourage everybody to get out to the Sellersville Theater. Check out an evening with Craig Shoemaker on Friday, the Love Master. Craig, where can we get where tickets? Can I, yeah, where can we get tickets? Tell everybody. Well, craigshoemaker.com. I'm official Craig Shoemaker on Instagram. By the way, it's Craig Shoemaker, folks, not Craig Schumacher. It drives me. Hello, Mr. Schumacher. There's no umlaut. <laughs> did I, did I say it right period. at least? Did I get you it right? Did. Yes. I, I always tell me it says shoemaker. You make shoes, you don't mock shoes. <laughs> and let, uh, unless they're Crocs. Oh, you've never seen Jason's shoes. <laughs> yeah. No, Crocs, Crocs, you can mock. <laughs> if he's got Crocs, you can mock those all day. You know what the holes are for? So your self esteem can slip out. I know because I have five pair. I don't care anymore. I drive a minivan. I just don't care about anything anymore. You have the little Eagles thing to put on your Crocs? By the way, I have Eagles slippers. That's what I'm I talking about. Look, that's gonna. That's the best way to have the last word, Craig. They can go to your website and get tickets. Uh, so excited to I have you. I thought you were going to say they get slippers. They, 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 I don't, but these are my slippers. Nobody gets to keep. Oh, you, don't, you don't get free Eagle slippers if you go You don't give them away at the show Friday? Maybe, maybe I'll, that might be a good giveaway. But yeah, craigshoemaker.com has tickets, Sellersville Theater. Just look it up. It's going to sell out. It might even be sold out. So uh, hopefully quickly. And I'll see you guys there. Dominic Brown, you know, the new bit, he's coming. Mm -hmm. Leslie Janelle, the Wolves, they'll all be there. A bunch of celebrities, uh, people from the Eagles, because they have a show that they have a, they have a, their show the night before. Oh boy, I'm going to that one. I'm <laughs> hoping, I'm uh, hoping for the best on that one. Oh yeah, they're going to need some cheering up. <laughs> yes, they. <laughs> the They're going to need lots of fun. Craig, thanks so much for the time, Thank as you. always. Can't wait to have you Thank back you. again. You got it.